Well, good morning. Definitely not supposed to be working, but you know, gotta come hang out with the big dogs. All the big dogs are here. Massey, Meekum, Reliable, McAllister's. I am picking up. I've got four, four cars to save out of here. A uh, Canadian fella who got my information from another customer of mine had some vehicles here that I guess did not sell or did not hit reserve or whatever and uh, they need to move to a different auction but today is like the absolute last day to get these out of here like it's not even open to the public to get things out of here now it's all their own transport so if you don't get your cars out of here they will they'll book it for you and charge you for it one of Meekum's hotshot setups. Yeah, they'll book the transport for you and, and get it out of here. They'll send it back to you or take it to the next auction. The next one's in Monterey, California. So These are our first two. I'm pretty sure the key's hidden somewhere for this. Sent me a picture of the key on a bumper. I see it, I gotta get on the ground and and get it real quick. I'm back for my second round of cars. 67 Cornet 440 convertible. No sale. High bid was only 27,000 on this car. Must not be as popular what I'm about to show you. Nice clean black interior. Man, look at all the gnats in there from being inside the building. Not too shabby. And now, we have a 71 Cuda convertible. This interesting brown, goldish color. It's a 340 car. It knows it at $170,000. White interior. Very, very clean car. Now I'm going to take these, store them for the weekend, and then they're going to head to another auction down in North Carolina. Guess they're gonna see if they can't maybe get a little more money out of them. I'm guessing probably this one, and then maybe this may be what is a $200,000 car. But this guy, this company's out of Canada and they got a hold of me and they were in a bind. So here I am to save the day. I would like to know how somebody met. Actually, I can probably tell you. I was just watching. Uh, Jacks with wild, what is it, wild, wild west or whatever. Cattle hauler out of, uh, out of Montana. And he was just talking about this in his last video. Where it looks like tail swing from a dry van. But they're pushed. That one's pushed, look like, maybe somebody backed into it. I thought it was tail swing because of how that pole was marked. But it's, unless they were going out the other way. Maybe they'd come in the wrong way and had pushed it this way, but god dang. When I mean, they took all the guts and everything out of it. Look at the amount of fuel that's sitting down in there. When it broke everything off, pipe broke right there. Yikes. Anybody want some free diesel? <sighs> Look how low this thing's sitting. I'm down in this hole. Little divot coming in through here. I'm gonna check this load and get back on the road. So I was just stopping to do a quick load check. And honestly, I think I've given up about 90 or so percent of my business in the past few months. And uh, I, in turn, have, I think, made more, saved more, and been a lot happier. Uh, part of that is because I gave up pretty much running anything off the load board found myself and many others anybody in this industry is gonna say yep that happens to us all the time like know exactly what you're talking about it's getting worse and worse and worse and it's just not worth it and that is running freight or running cars for these brokers and most okay so when I start let's start when I started maybe five percent of the time there was an issue there was great communication 
there was the items were what they said they were the pickup and drop off locations were notified everything was pretty much lined up all you had to do was give maybe a quick call ahead you know the day before and be like if you're picking up at a residence being like hey i'm gonna be there at 5 p.m around 5 p.m tomorrow does that work nowadays it seems like no matter what nobody is in the loop they're like oh we didn't even know this car was going to be picked up or they they told us there'd be a truck here a week ago and nobody ever showed up so we had it shipped elsewhere and that was after you went and spent all the time of you know planning on having that vehicle or planning on having that freight not looking for anything else missing out on other opportunities telling people no so i just i really just got to just the shits of it and just really cut out all that all that broker nonsense there's a very select few that I still help but most of my work is direct customers or direct customers that come from word of mouth like these cars here I mean I've got these cars no sailed at an auction they had trouble getting them out and uh, one of my customers who is in North Carolina said hey I know a guy that's up that way maybe he can help you and uh, that's how I ended up with these cars so I don't know how maybe here here's my reasoning behind why it's turned into more money is because I was telling a lot of people no before and the people that because I was so busy I had stuff scheduled out so far that I was telling people no that I couldn't take care of their stuff and they were willing to just pay my price when I would have somebody that I thought that fit into my schedule or my route and turns out then that spot was left empty because something would happen so I'm just kind of like I don't know picking and choosing my work which is a blessing don't I never I never complain about that I never complain about being too busy things I complain about being too busy with is just people who don't care about your time so most of my work is is week by week I try not to unless it's somebody that has agreed to a price already and most of the times now I'm taking deposits so I know they're serious and they don't back out last minute like those cars of Florida two weeks ago I had five total vehicles I had to ship for him and he paid a deposit so I knew he was serious so I just I pick and choose because I love what I do. I absolutely love what I do. I love this industry, but I don't like the people that are in it. And it all got terrible right at COVID. It's a little better now. It's a lot of companies are starting to go out of business that were fly by night. And uh, it's starting to weed them out, but we have a long way to go. We have a very long way to go. And none of the, you know, the, the load boards like Central Dispatch, they don't care. They don't care about these people who don't have proper equipment that are showing up double, triple, quadruple brokering. They're, they're booking loads as a broker. They're booking loads as a carrier, but they are a broker, so they're sending a truck that doesn't have proper insurance, sending false insurance. It's a whole fiasco. I could make like, and I probably will, I'll probably make a video on the recent situation that Adam had with getting these trucks moved that could have turned into a complete nightmare thankfully did not turn into how bad it could have been it was still terrible but it could have been a lot worse with the situation with the truck and the equipment and what was being shipped and uh you know we ask a hundred questions before we send a load to anybody this is the truck coming to pick it up. This is the insurance. Well, the insurance in the truck that we are sent isn't the one that shows up, and we're not there to monitor it. So that's where it becomes a fiasco because we can't be everywhere. We can't be at these auctions in Michigan checking to make sure the truck that's picking them up is the truck that we were given the information. So enough rambling. Quick load check, bathroom break, and uh, I've got to find a spot to stay tonight because... You guys know that my mega cab has been down for quite a while. Um, I was gonna do all the work myself, and then in this whole revelation of finding time to just take off work, spend time with the kids, spend time with my wife, 
have some type of a social life, whether it's going on vacation, weekend vacations with my family, or taking days off to take the kids to do this, or go swimming, stuff like that, just the little stuff that you don't get back when your kids are little. Um, I just don't have the time to fix that truck, so what I'm actually doing is I'm picking up um, parts for it, brand new head, um, I had one I thought I had already purchased. They sent me my money back because I knew the company, uh, but they didn't actually have one. I uh, went to pick it up. They didn't have the head. They said, let's just refund you. I said, that's fine, whatever. Then I was on the scramble to find one. Found a company down in North Carolina that has them in stock. Going to pick up a brand new head. We're going to haul it up next week uh, to... One of our buddies, Ron, who owns a diesel shop, back with diesels, he said, sure, bring it up. I'll get the guys to put it back together. That way, when I go pick up that truck, I know it's 100% and I can get it back to not even working because I'm not really worried about working that truck as much as I've had to in the past because I have some other plans, which we may talk about in this video, maybe future videos, um, as far as either putting a sleeper on the single cab and keeping that truck. I tried to sell it. That was a fiasco. Um, that's a story for another day. Keeping that truck, putting a sleeper on it, selling that truck, or um, selling the mega cab and that truck and getting something else than having two work trucks. But I kind of like the two work truck, one personal truck kind of balance because uh, having a personal truck that I can just hop in that's clean, you know, has the kid seats in it, stuff like that is. is so so easy to me um i have my wife's truck obviously but i want to try to keep the miles off of that it's paid off why not just keep it as nice as we can for as long as we can it's a rust free it's a denali there's no use in putting miles on it when we don't have to so uh, i'm going to check these straps which these cars have been coming loose they're big they're long they got this soft suspension on them so they bounce and the tire straps want to come loose so i going to check those and we're going to get back down the road. Well, we made it to Greensboro. Let's get these cars dropped off. Do not start. Maybe. Well, we got one out. See if we can't get this one out. This one fires right up. Oh man, I love this IAA. Hold on, let me. I'm picking up a big van, uh, a Chevy box van. I've been here a bunch of times. I remember that lady in there. Like we we can give you assistance to get it started and whatnot if you need. If not, you can just go back to the back and grab it. So uh, I don't have to wait for a loader. This is the most trucks I've even seen here before. There's four four trucks, three uh, three uh, multi. I can't see them. There's one three-car rollback and two regular rollbacks, I think. Yeah. All at the same company picking up, so it'll be a little bit getting them loaded. Then there's a two-car coffin, maybe. Dang, here comes another one from that company. They're out of Philadelphia. Got four trucks here. Anyways, ladies like, uh, you know where you're going? I said, I'm pretty sure. I know where your oversized stuff is. So she said, go ahead and help yourself. I cannot complain about that. I'm gonna drive back to the back here. Man, we got some serious rain last night, so it's a little muddy. It's a pretty good stone lot. It's just a little rough, so. We'll get back here to the back and uh, pull over and let this wheel loader go by here. I will get to the back and I will find my van. It's a run and drive. I'm assuming worst case scenario, the battery is dead. 
again, the amount of just, and I don't know why the people buy these completely burn up cars. I don't know if it's for, you know, to give you how to get a VIN number for a car or something. God, man, those things are toasted. There ain't nothing left on them but some of the body. GG55. Well, my customer told me he had one here. I was like, heck yeah, I'll get it. I love coming to this place. It's the place I was here not too long ago, and I had an issue with that. With that 4500 Ram that was supposed to go all the way to Florida. get back here I'm just picking this up taking it back to the house I think I'm gonna deliver this on Friday morning early let's see if we can't track this thing down dang this was a nice truck out of Florida shoo she got a little hot like, I don't understand how this is ever gets out of here. I mean, other than a big rotator setting this on a low boy, like, then what's it worth, really? You know what I mean? There's a camper. There's a, maybe what was left of a Brinks truck. This is my, <laughs> this is mine right here. See what we got. Okay. All right. Gonna be a little pain to get under the hood of this thing. But let's see what we got. Ow. Looks like an old FedEx truck. Not sure how tall this thing is, but we'll have to measure that out. Batteries on the other side. I gotta use my head to prop this up. Let's see if we can't get this die hard started. Oh, look at the height on this thing. Well, let's take a step back because I already measured it. All right, but if you ever am questioning yourself, you should ha always have a height stick. But if you're always Ever questioning yourself, find a semi and see if you're taller than it. Yeah, that truck there is probably 13, I don't know what those are. Maybe they're 13.6, 13.4. 13 13.4 13 is all we're sitting at right now. I don't really have any bridges to worry about. Just had to back it all the way as far as I could up. I could drop some height by taking air out of the tires, but uh, I'm honestly sweating my butt off and filthy. I don't know what's wrong with it. We got it started. And then something in the shifter may be broken. I don't know. Uh, right there is a shift linkage. I was able to take it off and then pull it in and out to put it in gear. But it's on there and uh, it's strapped down. So let's take this back to the house. <laughs> 